Our last panel is Michelle Araka, School Counselor, Philadelphia School District, Leroy Williams, School Counselor, Philadelphia School District, Roxanne Green, Truancy Services Supervisor, Cora Services, and Richard Washington, Executive Director, bringing everybody together. Good afternoon, welcome. Could you please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony? Yes, Michelle Rocca, counselor. You can go ahead, I'll Michelle. Start. Okay. Um, thank you for this opportunity to um, talk with you about what is happening in the schools. Um, school is the one place where children spend the majority of their day. Picture, if you will, you back in your high school. Do you see and feel the sights and sounds that made up your experiences? Just picture a day back then. Now, picture yourself as a high schooler in a public school today. A school with no arts, no nurse, counselors that were removed from buildings here one day and gone the next. Noontime aides, bilingual counselor assistants, non-teaching assistants, classroom assistants, librarians, deans, instructional staff, assistant principals, climate managers assigned to help keep students safe. Gone. They are all gone. Earlier, it was brought up about a bullying specialist, someone to go to in a school. Well, guess what? They're gone. The essentials of a school have all been pulled from your high school due to the words that we have all heard again and again, budget cuts. We are all so sick of that word, yet it smacks us in the face every day. Buildings falling from neglect Schools closing down, everyone overwhelmed with more and more responsibilities. A multitude of jobs, big and small, distributed with less and less staff. Do you know what this means to be students of a public school today? It means that their days of school are shaped by the understanding that no one cares enough about them to put the integral people in their lives. It means that they don't matter enough to have arts and supplies and help with their needs or to have the doors of their library or the nurse's office open for them. To them, it means teachers without supplies. It means sitting in classes that are maxed to capacity. It means that their favorite staff have left them since no money was available to keep them. They hear it in the news, they see it on TV, they hear it in the schools, the same things over and over again for the past few years. Nope, we don't have money for school trips to colleges. Nope, we don't have money for field trips. We don't have money to purchase new computers or new books or construction paper. We don't have money for that activity anymore. All they hear is that no money is available for them to have anything other than what is deemed absolutely essential. Do you know how they internalize this? Why? They ask themselves, what did I do to deserve so little in my school? Am I really not worth it? Do I really not matter as much as the others I see and hear about? Let's talk for a minute about the missing staff, because this is the reality of all public schools since the budget was so severely reduced. These people that have been pulled from the schools are the backbone of every school. They are not just extra support. They are not a luxury. I am a counselor, and I have been in the district for almost 20 years. I know that I'm a necessity. Despite having lost my job three years ago, when I, along with all my fellow counselors, were dismissed, thrown out, left without my career, after all I had done to service Philadelphia school students. 
That was my outcome? Sure, I was rehired. I was put in a school where we went from four to one counselor overnight. What? What is that? I'll tell you what that is. That's a nightmare. A nightmare that has been going on for the past few years now. A nightmare that we are really noticing, feeling, witnessing, and understanding, at least those of us that are watching. See, I have a voice. I can talk about my nightmare. It is not me that I'm worried about. As always, the nightmare is experienced the most by the ones who need it the most, the very students and families that we have been entrusted to help. We before you are the voice for the students who cannot be heard. We're the beacon for the students who are lost. We're the pillar of support for the students who are at their weakest. We in the schools are doing all we can to help the children. We stop fights in an age when confrontations are the way to solve things. We're the first in line to save a student who is contemplating suicide. Who else deals with the bullying that you talked about earlier? It's faced every day. Who are the students supposed to go to when all the caring staff are dropped from schools? To do without these people in the building has been a death sentence for some. For some, literally, and that was brought up earlier today, and of course, figuratively, each and every day. How has the SRC or the district, how are they doing this? Are they asking the kids what it is like without the counselors or dean or assistant principal or nurse there for them? Do we know what that feels like to them? The lives of the children of Philadelphia have been altered by all of this nonsense about budget cuts. Their daily survival has been made rougher. Their future career and college goals, they've not been explored. Their mental health needs, let's not even go into that. They're not being met. The public school staff that I know have chosen to devote themselves to the Philadelphia students. We have had our share as professionals, our share of attacks and blame and never-ending stress. If the SRC and the district think that our children have not been affected by our absences and by the skin and bones budgets left at the schools, they are delusional. While at school, I have broken the news to a student about her sister's death and then drove her to her home where her sister died. My shirts have been stained from tears and makeup of students throughout the years. My husband, also a counselor, has a forever scar on his head from hitting a wall while chasing after a suicidal student. My fellow counselor was right there when a student received a text from his mother as she overdosed and died on the other end. We in the buildings today have given clothes, money, food of our own to help the students in need. We've gone to too many funerals and experienced our own heartache just to help students cope with their tragedies. We sacrifice our families, our own families' needs every day for the needs of our students. We've stayed on the phone into the night with desperate students. We've jumped in when parents start swinging on a student in front of us. We've helped many students by being with them as they told their parent they were pregnant or gay or had been raped. We have prevented drug overdoses by being vigilant and by being trusted by students. We have learned by graduates with tears in their eyes years later that we were the single reason they made it through high school. Our students, these children, who are left to feel uncared for in a school, they know the value of what we have done for them. Now tell me this, how is it that they can see it, but the adults who make all of the decisions about what goes into the school cannot see it? So, while we are surviving on the front lines, it is survival, let me tell you, in our unvalued jobs, awaiting pink slips or further funding cuts, while struggling each day to keep the kids and the schools afloat, I only hope that someone gets it. We are fighting a losing battle 
Many excellent colleagues have abandoned their positions in the public school. Who needs this extra stress, for real? All of this saddens me and leaves me with the tears and a breaking heart as I wonder how. How can anyone with a heart do all of this to these wonderful, beautiful, most deserving young people? Don't they matter? How did we end up in this mess? The questions asked earlier, I've been sitting here since 1 o'clock. City Council has asked wonderful questions. Who are the ones to answer that? Where is the SRC? Where's the district that can give reliable answers to this? We're always at the table, ready to talk. But where are they? They don't know what's going on in the school. I hope that this gives a voice to it. Do I sound mad? I guess so. Because this is all I think about. And I cannot tell you how much it hurts to see what the kids need and to know that they don't get it. And all they do is walk around thinking, what did I do? Why can't I get what I need? Thank you so much, Ms. Rafa. Your testimony is extraordinary, and we appreciate you so much for being here. Um, and assure you that uh, we will be following up with the school district. We, um, and holding them accountable, we're going to go through all the panelists, and then we'll have um, any follow-up questions from my colleagues. Good afternoon, City Council. My name is Leroy Williams, and I am the guidance counselor at Furness High School. I've been in the district for 29 years. Prior to that, I have a background in mental health that spans back 15 years before the school district of Philadelphia. I want you all to think about family and family structure. Most of our schools, we pretty much have something that's considered as a family structure. Now look at the flip side and look at the destruction of the family structure. If you look at our schools today, with all the staff that's being taken out of our schools, all the way up to principals, assistant principals, down to the people that work and serve the lunches, no NTAs, no SSAs, classroom assistants, Counselors at this point, from when I started, our caseload was 250 to 1. I'm now in the school with 700 students. Three years ago when I lost my job and was called back, I had nine schools to service in five days. Nine schools. How is that possible for one person, duly certified as an itinerant counselor, to service seven elementary schools and two high schools in five days? We're only in school seven hours a day. That's 35 hours a week, nine schools. Now you figure the elementary schools have about three or 400 students per school. Do the math. How is that possible? Afterwards, I was actually assigned back to the neighborhood school that I've been at for 10 years, which is Furness. Furness's student population, we actually have over 60% ESOL students. We have a transient population of students. And we're probably the most diversified high school in the city of Philadelphia. We have over 20 different ethnic groups in our school. We have ESOL from basic to level four. We have special ed. We have nine AP classes. We also have a program that is a national model called AVID. Somebody mentioned earlier, what can we do to provide an educational program in the school district in the school district of Philadelphia? 
I am the avid administrator for Furness High School. In addition to being the only counselor, the AP coordinator, I also monitor halls, cover classes, the cafeteria, the dean's office, and pretty much do everything that I'm asked to do every day. The only times that I've been absent this school year is when my counterpart sitting to my immediate left, which is my wife, was sick, possibly with pneumonia, where I had to make sure that she did not go into the hospital. Other than that, sick or whatever, I get up every day and I come to work. Three years ago, as an itinerant counselor, I was asked by a principal to go to another high school. I refused. Be it that I've been at Furness, I'm part of that family structure. I can go through my cell phone and show you over 4,000 phone numbers of parents and students that I've stayed in contact with since I've been at just Furness for the past 10 years. If I leave that school, I don't see another counselor coming in and providing the service that I provide to those students. So when I mention to you all family structure and the breakdown of the family structure, as I mentioned, the flip side, look at what the School Reform Commission is doing in relation to taking staff members, family members, out of the schools that these students are looking at on a daily basis to provide some type of service to them. Every day they look for the same people. They're not there, who can they go to? And yes, I'm the person who actually has a permanent scar on my forehead for running after a student who was suicidal because of my background in mental health. And the flip switch cuts on to try and protect the child. And I ended up getting injured, running into a wall, trying to save a student. And I ended up getting 11 stitches and having to go to the hospital. That student today, female, is in the United States Marine Corps. I deal with students on a daily basis whose parents treat it like nothing. This particular child's mother couldn't care less about her. I watched her come up and call her every kind of name that there is. That child calls me her father today. Five years after she's graduated from Furness High School. I've dealt with students who have been raped, molested, thrown out, kicked out. As a matter of fact, my wife and myself, was that three years ago? We actually dealt with DHS and a student at my school whose mother went after her with a knife. With the help of DHS, this child and her stepfather stayed with us in our house until they could go through court and have this person removed with a restraining order. As I mentioned before, the family structure exists in a lot of these schools. The absence of all the staff members, these students look at part of the absence of their families. We're part of their extended families. Family is what you make it. It does not have to be blood. But we actually are trying to mold and shape these kids and give them the tools to function in the 21st century. If the school district of Philadelphia and the school reform commission consistently removes all of these members, are these kids considered as throwaway kids? How do they look at their future? 
How do we look at them if we can't provide them with the tools that they need? So I ask and implore you all to try and help us and keep the staff that we have and try and bring back the rest of the staff to make sure that we can provide these students with the tools necessary to function as citizens in the 21st century in this world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams. And again, we appreciate your coming in and sharing this um, very important um, testimony. Thank you so much.